Right, good morning and welcome back to my series on building a bandsaw. This morning I'm talking about tools to align the blade and the wheels. I made three tools and we're going to talk this morning on well, two are pretty simple. I'm just going to show you those on the mill. This one's a little more complicated. This is to uh, adjust the blade parallel side to side. In other words, the, the teeth to the back to get it flat. Uh, I've tried the mill. I'm going to make a video. The next thing I do is, is actually sawing with it. It saws nice now, but it was it was waving. It was going up and it was going down. And the problem was the blade wasn't straight front to back and so it would dive into the wood and then the tension would take it back up out and it dive back in. So I made this very simple tool. All it is is there's a slot cut here just a little bigger than the blade a place here for the blade to come down in and then slide in a couple of set screws to hold it. And I'll show you real quick how I did that. I'm not going to actually make it. I'm just going to show you on the bridge port how I made it. Uh, the biggest problem we have is this slot has to be perfectly perpendicular to this bottom. So when you tighten the blade down onto it, it will show you whether it's uh, canted to the front or the back. And mine was a little bit like this. So it would dive down in, then it would come back up out, and it would dive down in, come back up out. This simple tool fixed that. Uh, it's just a piece of inch and a quarter, inch and a half, uh, quarter inch aluminum, about two feet long. I'll show you real quick how I did that on the bridge port and what I used. All right, this is the cutter I used to make the saw. It's simply a slot cutter. An R8. Uh, mandrel. All I did was go in here like this and make that cut, make this slot here. And then I took that out and put this, uh, just an end mill in and milled out this slot here. This is where the blade will go down, drop in here and it'll slide in here. This, this cutter here it's just a hair bigger than the blade so it can slide in there. Afterwards I took this out and I put in this Albert's chuck. But what I wanted to make a point of was, uh, let's have a pointer here, it's good enough. There's two holes drilled. These will be drilled on each uh, edge to just check, catch the blade. And this is this is a little uh, lower than the blade so the teeth can set in here because there's an offset on the teeth. And the, the tooth will stop right here and these will clamp on the blade when it's in this slot just uh, back from each edge so you get some balance on the blade. But these are drilled about halfway or so down the size of a 632 set screw, each one of these. And then they're just tapped this last part of the way. And the reason for that is aluminum is pretty gooey. If you tried to tap the whole distance, you'd never make it without breaking the tap because uh, 632 is pretty small. And there goes the air compressor right on cue. So here's the 632 set screw. It simply sets in here. It'll tighten down on the blade. There's two of them. So the last thing I had to do is I've got it all made now, but it needs to be balanced right between these two uh, set screws so that and it, and it is when it's on the uh, blade it's hanging on the blade the weight of it won't influence it one into the other so I cl basically clamped a nail in the vise right in between these and then and then just cut the end off whichever end was heavy until until the balance was achieved right in the middle of those two this is going to be under tension when, you, when you're checking it, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want any false reading, so you want the balance point right between these two. 
pretty simple device made all the difference in the way it cuts okay I'm up here to the mill me and the black flies, it's black fly season here in Vermont always enjoy that and here's the, uh, the piece we made, but it actually serves two purposes with this I can also make sure that my uh, guides have held this down a quarter of an inch using this as a straight edge so I lay it up on with it under tension I lay it up I've got just a quarter of an inch to the band wheel on this side and I've got a quarter of an inch to the band wheel on that side I made a little spot to store my allen wrench in the back so I'll take that open and I'm using a four foot level as the uh, straight edge to use this against gullet and just a little pressure it doesn't take much and then we'll settle it down on it make sure I've got full tension There we go, I'm running about 2,000 pounds tension, which gives me somewhere around 16 to 1800 on the blade. So. We go over to the edge, right by the guide. We'll do both sides. Then as you look down through, if this end and that end are the same, the blade is correct front to back. And that's what we have. They're the same. So we're in pretty good shape. And then I would run it over to the other guide and do the same. And that's all there is to that. Now the other problem you have is this wheel and this wheel have to run straight to each other across this way so basically all I did was make a straight edge that I can lay right across both wheels just above the hub just like that so now if if it's touching the wheel in all four spots this edge of the wheel this edge of the wheel that edge of the wheel and the back edge of that wheel this these are in line with each other they may be out or in, but they're in line with each other, and that's all that really counts. So now you can adjust your bearing blocks to bring these wheels in perfect alignment. You can also measure from here to the back of, of the uh, mount bar on each side to get them the same distance out. The only other thing now you have left is to make sure that they both tip the same amount. So all I did was take another piece of aluminum and make a little tip bar, if you will. And I can put a level on here, I don't have to have one with me, and make these exactly the same level. And it, it's more important that they're sa the same level, that they're perfectly straight. In fact, they're supposed to tip back a little bit, like this, and then you straighten with the guide, you bring it back flat. I'm not sure why that is, but Mr. Cook says that's how it ought to be. And I think he actually knows. So these are now, they're, they're perfectly level with each other. They're perfectly straight to each other. The uh, band is laid over to the point where it's perfectly straight with the bunks. So now I can cut some pretty nice lumber and it does. So the only thing you have left to do is level it. On this mill I put six leveling legs. And if you take your time, if you have a laser, that's the best. If not, a regular four foot level will do. Leveling across and up each rail. Take your time till you get it perfect. The more level it is, the better lumber you're gonna cut. So we've got the blade set. We've got the mill leveled. Uh, it's time for us to do some cutting.